Okay, let me start by asking you a question. Sino sa inyo ang kaya magsabi, I am a patient person? Anybody? Patient. I'm a patient person. Wala? Wala kaya magsabi? Ha? Huh? Wala kaya magsabi. Yung bang patience means yung kaya mag, yung willing maghintay. Wala? Wala kaya? Okay, katulad sa inyo, no? Pag graduate, gusto ko kagad may restaurant ako. Kung pwede, kung may pera lang. And many people want to be able to do many things kagad na yun. You know, so, ang tanong ko, ba't karamihan ng tao hindi makapaghintay? Bakit karamihan sa atin parating nagmamadali? In fact, today, no, gusto ko mangyari siya ngayon. Like, for example, if I ask you, why are you in school? Or why do you want to work? Ang sasabihin nyo, kasi wala akong pampuhunan, kailangan akong mag-ipod, pero kung pwede lang, yung lahat ng dream ko dapat ngayon mangyari. Bakit ba dapat yumaman ang mga bata kaagad? Like many years ago, I was talking to this 22-year-old girl. Anak siya ng may-ari ng isang kumpanya. And I was asking her, Iha, ano plano mo? Ano ang gagawin mo? Sabi niya, Tito, I need to go here, I need to do that, I need to... Do this, wag ganyan. Tas by the age of 30, sabi ko sa kanya, iha na pagod naman ako sa iyo. No, kasi sa dami nang gusto niyang gawin. Tas I asked her, bakit by the age of 30? And most people would say, because idol namin si Mark Zuckerberg. Sino sa inyo gustong yumaman by the age of 30? I'm, I'm sure, uh, pare-pareho ganyan ang mga milenyo, gusto ko yumaman by the age of 30. Dapat gayon na. Eh, ang tanong ko pa, bakit ba dapat mabili nyo ang magandang cellphone ngayon? Maski walang pera, makabiyahe, I'm sure gusto nyo pumasyal. And then, meron pa mga pinag-uusapan ngayon, YOLO, FOMO, fear of missing out, uh, you only live once. And ang tanong ko, why is it hard for people to delay gratification? Have you ever heard God say, Uy, bilisan mo kasi nagmamadali ako. Narinig niyo na si God nun? Have you ever seen that sa Bible? Or if, if, if you listen to your priest or to your pastor, have you ever heard that comment, bilisan mo kasi nagmamadali ako? Alam ba niyo na on the contrary, you will find na many in the stories in the Bible, God would patiently wait for His people. What do I mean? I don't know if you know these stories, no, but He waited 25 years before He gave Abraham the son that He promised. Tagal, no? 25 years. He waited 40 years before he asked Moses to deliver the Jews from Egypt. Then he made them roam in the desert for 40 more years bago niya pinasok sila sa promised land. So, ibig sabihin, God allowed the Jews to suffer 80 years. Anong 80 years? 40 years waiting for Moses, 40 years in the desert. So, sana na-save na sila pero inalaw ni God sila mag-suffer for 80 years. He waited for 14 years before he made David king. David was anointed king when he was 16. However, he allowed Saul to hunt David around Israel for 16 years bago siya naging king. Finally, pinatay ni God si Saul in a, in, in a war with the Philistine so that David could become king when he was 30. Kung kaya ni God bilisan, di ba? I believe kaya ni God bilisan, di ba? Kung kaya ni God bilisan, ang tanong ko, why does he delay instead? Alam mo, I've been asking these things, ba't minsan ang bagal ni God? You know, I found the answer by asking more questions. So, tanungin ko kayo. What would happen if God gave Abraham Isaac when he was 80? You see, Isaac was born when he was 100, 25 years after the promise. What would have happened if Isaac came five years after? Ano mangyayari? I don't know if you know the story, no? but during the time, Si Abraham was disobedient and he would even lie about his wife. You know, I don't know kung papayag yung mga babae dito. Kasi maganda si Sarah, whenever he would go to a place, pag kinuha nung king si Sarah, payag si Abraham. Tapos sabi niya, kapatid ko lang naman yan eh. Can you imagine pinain yung misis niya dalawang beses? Gusto ba niya makapag-asawa ng ganong lalaki? Imagine, ibib- papamigay ka. And that was Abraham. So if he he became the father to Isaac when he after five years, he would have trained his son in a bad way. He would make his son lie, and he would make his son become disobedient. 
So what would happen if God used Moses when he was 40, not when he was 80? You know, see, Moses, when he was 40, he was very, he was full of confidence. He knew he would save uh, uh, the Jews from Egypt. And so he went, uh, he, he went to his brother, nakapatay siya ng tao defending his brothers. Alam nyo, if God used Moses when he was 40, he would have been arrogant, thinking na kaya niya. He would have no compassion. So what would happen if God made David king when he was 20, not when he was 30? You know, when he was 16 to 20, he was still a shepherd. Wala yung alam paano maging leader. So God allowed him to roam again around the desert. Pinadahalan pa siya ng 400 worthless men to train him to become a king. So yun yung nangyari dun sa tatlong tao na yun. Now, let us continue to understand what will happen if you rush things. What will happen to a plant if you force it to bear fruit before its season? Ano mangyayari? Alam ba nyo today, no, kayo, your, uh, kwan kayo, mga uh, hotel and restaurant, no? To agriculturists, today there are technologies that will force a plant to bear fruit before its season. Pwede mong pilitin yan. However, when you force a plant to bear fruit before its season, you eventually kill it. It will die early because pinipilit mo siya maglabas nang wala siyang kayang ilabas. What will happen to a caterpillar when you force it out of its cocoon? Nak nak ginawa nyo na yun? Nakita kayo ng cocoon, tapos sabi mo, tulungan ko siya. Ginawa nyo na yun? Pinakailaman nyo yung cocoon, tapos kumuha kayo ng gunting, pinutol nyo, ginawa nyo na yun, oh. Pinakailaman nyo yung cocoon, oh. oh. Anong nangyari dun sa butterfly? Bakit, bakit, bakit hindi siya nag-develop? Alam ba nyo na it is necessary for the butterfly to get out of its cocoon in its own? Kasi every time he rubs his wings dun sa shell, dun sa cocoon, lumalakas yung wings niya para mag-form properly. Pag tinulungan mo siya, hindi nag-form. What happens to a chick if you crack the egg? To help it out early. Ano, binuksan mo, naririnig mo na, palabas siya. So, binasag mo. Ano mangyayari? It will never be able to form strong bones. So, you will find in nature, they only become strong and fruitful if you allow them to develop properly. Pag binilisan mo, nasisira yung plano. So, may tanong ako sa inyo. Have you ever made wrong decisions? Nakagawa na kayo? Kailan nangyari yon? Noong nagmamadali. Meron ba sa inyo who can tell me a story na nagmadali kayo, maganda nangyari? Meron ba sa inyo nangyari? Alam mo, minadali ko, tapos maganda lumabas sa resulta. Can you remember any of your decision na gumanda kasi nagmadali kayo? Wala, no? So, ang tanong ko, but kay parati nagmamadali? Alam ba nyo that when you rush your decision, you either get hurt or you will hurt other people? One day, sabi daw ni Manuel, President Manuel L. Quezon sa driver niya, Boy, 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 wag mong bilisan kasi nagmamadali tayo. Okay ba yun? Ang sabi niya, wag mong bilisan kasi nagmamadali tayo. Di ba kayo nagmamadali kay umaman, di ba? Tama? Di ba gusto niyo umaman kagad eh? So, bet niyo binibilisan. In, when, when I heard that, I felt that it was a very stupid statement. However, if you think about it, tama naman eh. Pag binilisan mo, anong posible mangyari pag binilisan? Maaksidente. O hindi, magkamali ng liko. Pag nagkamali ng liko, mas matagal bumalik. Eh, paano pag maaksidente? Anong mangyari? Okay? Sira yung kotse, masasaktan ka pa kasi nagmamadali kayo. Think about the times that you rush your decision. Did you gain any money? Did you gain, gain any benefit? In fact, nung nagkamali kayo ng decision, nawalan pa kayo ng pera. Diba? Nawalan kayo ng pera. Pag pinasok kayo, mamaya, hindi nyo na siya mabawi. Parang mayroon kami yung kapitbahay ngayon. Gumawa siya ng bahay, minadali niya. Kasi meron siyang retirement. Okay? Hindi niya binilang yung cost. 
So today, nakalagay dun sa dun sa property niya for rent na lang. Hindi tapos yung building. So yung building is half done. Nak tanong, kailan niya mababawi 'yon? Yung kit yung ginastos niya doon. Kailan niya mababawi? Hindi niya mababawi 'yon unless he completes it. For the meantime, tapon na yung pera na yun. So many times, sa rush ninyo, natapon yung pera sa kamamadali ninyo. And this is also what happens to people who rush through business. Marami kong bata, madami bata ngayon gusto magnegosyo kagad. In fact, meron nagtanong, should, they, should we not do business as early as possible kasi may energy pa kami? Yung mga isip ng bata, why don't you do business as early as possible so that we can become richer than our parents? Di ba? Our parents became rich when they were old. Why can't we become rich when we are early? We have energy. We have strength. You see, problema nun, yung energy doesn't make you wise. You see, in, in business, importante wisdom. And wisdom is never gained over, overnight. Pagkatapos, energy doesn't make you successful. Energy lang, pas maraming mali. Patay yung pera, ubos. Kasi nga, nagmamadali, di lalo lahat, lahat, lahat ng mga desisyon, irarash. You don't go through business because you have energy. When you go through business, you go to it because you have wisdom. Ito problema. Where do you find your wisdom? And maybe we'll discuss that mamaya. Sabi sa mundo, bilisan mo, sayang ang panahon. Have you heard of that? Bilisan mo, sayang ang panahon. Alam mo ba that's the opposite of what Bible says? If you have Bibles, no, turn to Psalms 27. Kindly turn to Psalms 27, verse 14. Kung meron kayo mga Bible. Kung wala kayong Bible, makinig na lang muna kayo. Sabi ng Psalms 27, 14, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Why does the Lord, why does God want you to wait kung kaya naman niyang gawin kaagad? So ang tanong ko, why does God want us to delay our gratification? One of our breakthrough principles sa Similia, the last breakthrough principle, we sabi namin dyan, no, delay gratification for fruits come only in the proper season. Katulad ng sabi ko sa inyo kanina, if you force a plant to bear fruit early, you will eventually kill it. So lahat ng taong nagmamadali will eventually lose their money. Okay, so sabi namin si Milia, delay your gratification. Pero may tanong ako sa inyo. Bakit ba kayo nagmamadali? Kasi kanina when I ask you, no, sino sa inyo ang kaya magsabi na you're a patient person and walang maski isa nagtaas ng kamay? Can you tell me, ba't kayo nagmamadali? Bakit? Anybody? So, if life is short, ba't kayo nagmamadali? Ha? Kayo, ba't kayo nagmamadali? Diba? Na, na, bakit kayo nagmamadali? Ha? Time is gold. If time is gold, ba't kayo nagmamadali? Di ba sabi nga ni Manuel L. Quezon, huwag mong bilisan kasi nagmamadali tayo. Kaya nga, time is gold. Pag nagkamali ka ng desisyon, lalong bumabagal. Hindi ko maintindihan, if time is gold, then why do you waste time? By rushing. You don't save time by rushing. You actually waste time because you make many wrong decisions. So bakit kayo nagmamadali? Anybody? Bakit kayo nagmamadali? Many of us nagmamadali kasi gusto natin ma-experience yung yaman, mag-enjoy ng maaga. Tama ba yon? Gusto natin habang bata pa. Pero alam ba nyo yung yaman are like fruits? And what do I mean? Riches, riches come naturally to a prudent person. Ulitin ko lang ha. Yaman are like fruits. They're natural byproduct. Fruits are natural byproduct of healthy plants. So, ang yaman is a natural byproduct of a prudent person. Alam niyo ibig sabihin ng prudent person? Yung may talino? Yung may experience? Sa negosyo, profit is a natural byproduct of a healthy business. So, if you want to become rich, 
you must try to grow in wisdom, not in strength. If you want a business to become profitable, you must spend time building a healthy organization. I want you to understand, ang yaman is just a natural byproduct. Naintindihan niyo yun? Hindi hinahanap yan. Kusang dumadating yan. It's a natural byproduct of a prudent person. Ibig sabihin, matalino. It's also a natural byproduct of making the right decisions. So, pag gusto mong yumaman, you should understand kung ano ang tama, ano ang mali. And this is why, if I go back to Psalms 27 verse 14, sabi niya, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. The word wait, it doesn't mean na magtanga ka or don't do anything. In Hebrew, the word wait is kava. Okay, Q-A-V-A-H. Ang ibig niyang sabihin to wait in active anticipation. What does that mean? You wait in active anticipation watching for God to act. But let me explain this. Sabi niya, wait for the Lord. To wait for the Lord is not a passive action. It is to, uh, to anticipate things actively. Anticipate what? In, in Christianity, we talk a lot about faith. Ang faith, ibig sabihin ng faith is you trust and then you obey. You trust something that has been promised, you act on it, and then the promise have its blessing. Ang ibig sabihin ng to wait is as you understand the Lord, do as He, said, uh, do as he told you, and then wait for the blessing because the blessings will come. Today, maraming tao ang nagsa-struggle in business. In fact, today, one of your issues, and I believe you hear that, is mental health. Tama? So, I don't know kung meron na kayong problema sa mental health. Mukhang wala pa, no? Sige lang, pag-graduate nyo, magkakaroon kayo ng problema sa mental health. Huwag kayong mag-alala. Darating din yun. And one of the reason is, one, you try to succeed on your own, and two, you rush through, through life. Everybody is just rushing. Kaya nagkakaroon ng problema. Why will you have mental health? Every time you rush, you commit a mistake. How would you feel? Every time you commit a mistake, you lose money. How would you feel? Di lalo na magkakaproblema. And the Bible is saying, wait for the Lord. Pero how can you, uh, how can you wait on something you do not know? So, to wait on the Lord means to spend time understanding Him and understanding His ways. I don't know your religion. And hindi importante sa akin religion nyo. Importante is your relationship and faith on the Lord. Religion never, never benefits anyone. Because most religion are a set of rules. However, Christianity is about understanding the Lord so that you can act appropriately. Kaya yung aming first, mes- aming first principle says, Everything begins and ends with intimacy. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, we spend time knowing God and His ways so that we can act properly. And we do that, things will come naturally. Kanina ako sabi ko sa inyo na ang yaman is just a result of making the right decisions. So, ang tanong, how should we make the right decisions? Can you turn your Bibles kung meron kayong Bible sa Ephesians chapter 5. Sabi dyan, no? Sabi sa Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15, Be careful how you walk. Ang ibig sabihin nun, huwag mong bilisan. Now, bakit? Why should you be careful? Verse 16 says, Because the days are evil. Okay? Sabi niya, the days are evil. Now, what's so evil about our days? Now, one of the things that most people fail to understand is that calamities will come. Kanina, no, si John said na wala siyang mga feasibility study or strategic planning sa course niya. It comes from my, one of my principles na I said, I don't agree with strategic planning or feasibility study. Weird, no? Now, why do not I not agree with feasibility study or strategic planning? Ang rason, many of them are, anong tawag doon? Assumptions. Prediction, ba? You try to forecast what will happen. Tama ba yan? Many of them, when you make them, siguro meron kayo sa ibang klase ninyo, you will make, anong tawag doon sa, 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 when you make uh, strategic plans, 
Kalimutan ko na eh. Basta, basta para siyang you assume something, you predict something. Hindi, mga... Um, but anyway, the problem is people do not understand that calamities will come. What do I mean? If you can turn your Bibles to Ecclesiastes 11.2, Ecclesiastes 11.2 says, Divide your portion to seven or even to eight. For you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. One of the most important things I learned in business is that calamities will come. Be in 2019, most companies have their three-year plan, five-year plan, protecting growth. Did that happen? Bakit? Bakit hindi nangyayari yung plano nila in 2019? COVID came. Sino nakapag-predict sa COVID? Wala. So, ano nangyari sa strategic plan? Wala. Ako, I believe, I, I, I always tell my friends, while you can plan, make sure you build a agile organization. An organization that reacts properly or respond properly to changes. Kasi walang silbi ang strategy. Kasi you cannot forecast what will happen. So, meron kang feasibility study. Marami kang presumptions. Will they happen? Do you know in most feasibility study, only 20% happens? Because 80% will not. And ang rason, sabi niya, divide your portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what misfortune will happen. No matter how well you predict the future, you will never be able to predict the future. So teacher niyo, no, nagtayo na ang negosyo. May feasibility study ka? Wala. They, they just react. Merong plano. Pero better yet, they react. They respond to how things turn out. So sabi niya, be careful. Because the days are evil. The other reason why you all need to be careful is because of Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Ano sabi ng Colossians chapter 2, verse 8? Sabi doon, no? See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. Naloko na ba kayo? Meron nang nangloko sa inyo? Meron, no? Kilala nyo hindi? Naloko na ba kayo nang hindi nyo kilala? Alam, pag naloko kayo nang hindi nyo kilala, bubo talaga kayo. Di ba hindi nyo nga nyo kilala? Naloko pa kayo. Pero, pero naloko na tayo. E nang loko sa inyo, kilala ninyo. Kaya sabi ng Bible, be careful. Do not rush because there are people who will deceive you. Huwag mong bilisan kasi nagmamadali ka. Huwag mong bilisan, hindi mo alam anong mangyayari in the future. And then sabi ng Ephesians chapter 5 that we should be wise and unwise. Now, so it talks about wisdom. So, di ba, sabi ko sa inyo, the other week, may nagtanong sa akin in one of our fellowship, should we go into business while we are young because we have a lot of energy? So, sabi ko sa kanya, I don't suggest that. Because you have energy, you don't have wisdom. Now, what is wisdom? Ano ba ang wisdom? Wisdom, sabi ng iba, is to know right from wrong. That is not wisdom. Wisdom is to do what is right not wrong. Di ba walang silbi, alam mo, right and wrong, tapos hindi mo pa rin ginawa yung tama because many times, kakakamandali mo, hindi mo nalang gagawin yung tama. Wisdom is about your character. So therefore, it is not gain overnight. It is gain over time. It is gain through experience. So kayo, marami ng plano, my dream is to set up a restaurant when I come. Pag may pera lang ako, ito gagawin ko. Ang problema, pwede kayo magkaroon ng pera. Pwede kayo magkaroon ng strength. Pag wala kayong character and wisdom, walang silbi silang lahat. And today, kaya maraming nade-depress ng mga millennials, tsaka kayo Gen Z na kayo, doon Gen Z. Maraming nade-depress. Kala nila, because they have knowledge, nag-aral eh. Kala nila, kaya na nila. Kasi naniniwala sila sa prinsipyong knowledge is power. Do you agree with that? Sabi na, knowledge is power. Di ba? Yun ang uso eh. Knowledge is power. Do you agree? Ha? Huh? 
I don't. Knowledge is useless until you know how to use it. So ito problema. Porkit pumunta kayo sa eskwela, may, meron kayong knowledge, kala nyo magaling na kayo, and you don't know how to use it. Bakit? Yung teacher nyo may mga negosyo? Yun lang teacher nyo may negosyo. Yung teacher nyo ba may negosyo? So most of them wala. So natuturo nila sa inyo. Pag may negosyo ka, now you become more compassionate. Alam mo gaano kasakit. Pero kung galing lang sa libro, dali-dali lang sabihin, ganito lang yan, madali lang yan. Hindi madali magnegosyo. Mahirap. Nga nung tawa-tawa man ka. <laughs> oh, you sleep late. You sleep late. And then sabi kanina, ano pangalan mo? Jasper. Sabi ni Jasper, gusto ko magnegosyo because I want to have the freedom to do things when I want to, how I want to. Nagbab- nanonood ka masyado ng maraming internet. <laughs> Mahirap magnegosyo. Wala kang freedom. Okay? Because you need to do what the business requires you. So, be careful when you watch internet. Okay? Be careful. So finally, Ephesians chapter 5 says, the key to making the right decision is to understand the will of the Lord. Now, what does that mean? Let me just help you understand kung ano ibig sabihin nun by reading for you Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Sabi dyan, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prosper. Sino sa inyo gusto yung ganon? In whatever you do, you prosper. Sino sa inyo gusto? Okay. Sabi niya, first of all, do not walk with the counsel of the wicked. Alam niyo ba kung sino ang wicked? Wicked are not necessarily sinners, ha? Okay, for the, for the sake of, of, of our guests, this is what wicked means. Para mo maintindihan ko anong wicked, you go to the root word. The root word is wick. W-I-C-K. Ibig niya sabihin, mitsa ng kandila. Alam niyo, intindihan niyo? Wick is mitsa ng kandila. So that means twisted. A wicked person has a twisted mind. Ano twisted mind? May sira ang bait. Ano may sira ang bait? Alam ko ano tama, ginawa yung mali. And many of us call ourselves Christians. I really don't und- I really don't care on religion mo, but you call yourself Christians. You know there's a God. And yet you don't even consult Him. And then marami kayong prinsipyo, you listen to people who think, who, who says they're experts, and you don't even ask the Lord ano tama. Sabi nung kilala nyo, bilisan mo, sayang panahon. Sabi ni God, you wait for me. I'll tell you what to do. Pero sabi mo kay God, Lord, sayang, sayang. Bata pa kami, we should enjoy life. Pero sabi ni God, sandali lang. So, if you really want to prosper in everything you do, sabi niya, do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Yung mga taong, alam nila kung ano tama, hindi nila ginawa. Then sabi niya, you meditate on God's law day and night. So kami sa Similia, we read our Bibles every day. Not because we want to be holy, but because we want to prosper in everything we do. We need to understand the will of the Lord. I want you to understand, especially yung mga estudyante, you will never be truly successful without the Lord. I am not saying you cannot be successful through hard work. Many people have succeeded through hard work. However, without the Lord, you will not last. Bakit? You see, if God is not happy with you, kaya ba niyang kunin kung anong meron ka? Kaya hindi? Kaya niya anytime. Pero pag natuwa siya sa'yo, can, you, can He bless you anytime? Yes. So who decides your blessing? At the end of the day, the maker of this world decides your blessing. Pag happy siya sa'yo, He blesses you. One of my favorite verse in the Bible is Jeremiah 3.19. If you have a Bible, can you go there because I'd like you to appreciate this verse. Ganda ng verse nito. Sabi niya, Then I said, How I would set you among my sons. 
and give you a pleasant land, the most beautiful inheritance of the nations. And I said, You shall call me my father and not turn away from following me. Sabi dyan, If God is your father, He will someday give you a beautiful inheritance. May kasabang pleasant land. Sinong gusto magkaroon nun? I want an inheritance with a pleasant land. Kayo ayaw nyo nun? Gusto nyo yun? Gusto I think natin lahat, di ba? Pero however, you have to understand, He will only give that to His children. So, ang una nating tanong, sigurado ba kayo anak kayo ni God? Now, tanongin nyo si John ha, kung sigurado kayo anak kayo ni God. Pero issue yun. Okay? Dapat alam natin na anak tayo ni God. Kasi pag hindi tayo anak, wala tayong inheritance. Pero supposing you're a father, may isang anak obedient, may isang anak suwail, sino bibigyan mo ng inheritance? Yung obedient. Eh, yung suwail? Di ba? Si Ra- si- sayangin lang yan, di ba? So, a person who's obedient will receive blessings. So, if you want God to bless you, you must understand that you must become faithful. Faithful means knowing what He wants and doing what He wants. Now, I am not talking about serving in the church. Kasi hindi kami ganun sa Similia. We do business. We do our work. Okay? We bring our faith into our workplace. So, to be faithful means I take care of what God has given me according to how He wants me to take care of them. For the meantime, habang wala pa yung blessing, delay your gratification. Now, why do I tell you delay your gratification? Bakit? Bakit importante that you delay what you want? Kasi if you're not ready, sisirain ka ng blessing. What will happen if you grab a blessing that is not yours? What will happen? It becomes a curse. Pag hindi ka pa ready, pinilit mo, it beca- the blessing becomes a curse. Yan ang nangyayari. Yan ang nangyayari sa maraming millennial. Yan ang mangyayari sa Gen Z if you follow their footsteps. What do I mean? <clears throat> Let me share with you another story. I have this friend. Bata to millennial to. But millennial today is 30 to 40 years old. This boy is 36 years old. Sabi niya sa akin, Tito, what were you when you were 36? Sabi ko, I was assistant country manager of HP. Sabi niya, alam mo, Tito, my dad, when he was 35, he was vice president of Citibank. But ako, Tito, wala pa rin nangyari sa akin. What happened to me? Sabi ko sa kanya, Kasi kayong millennial, naghahanap kayo parati ng opportunity na maganda. Hindi kayo marunong gumawa ng opportunity by staying put. You see, we stayed put. Hindi kami makaalis because our opportunities are limited. Sa inyo, ang daming opportunities. So, naghahanap kayo ng opportunity na magpapayaman sa inyo. In one of my posts, I said, stop looking for perfect businesses. Because ang perfect na business, hindi hinahanap, ginagawa. Ang magandang buhay, hindi hinahanap, ginagawa by staying put. Si God wants you to delay your gratification. As, he, as you delay your gratification, He wants you to grow in character. Gusto niyang matuto ka by developing your skills and your character. One of the things I, I think where people, many people fail is they feel Success will come through skills and knowledge. No, success will come through character. I'd rather have a man of character than a man of knowledge. Kasi yung taong may character, madaling turuan. A man of knowledge, meron na dak, meron na kagagyabang. So when you graduate sa college, I hope you will decide to be humble. Today, oh, maraming graduate sa Manila, sila pa namimili ng sweldo. Meron akong kilala, bagong graduate, cum laude. So, inoferan siya ng kumpanya ng 30,000 per month sa Manila. Na-insulto siya. Kasi cum laude daw siya. Hindi man lang binalyo yung kanyang achievement sa eskwelahan. Pero achievement sa eskwelahan yun eh. Sa trabaho, wala ka pang achievement eh. So, you cannot demand. Okay, so be careful with your knowledge. Baka it makes you arrogant. Ulitin ko, if you really want to succeed in life, wisdom is important. But wisdom is not developed overnight. 
it is developed over time through experience. As I end lang, you don't have to go there, but I let me read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. Sabi dyan, There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stone and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to shun embracing, a time to search and a time to give up a loss as loss, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I like what you said, sabi mo, time is gold. Totoo yun. Time is very important. In fact, sa akin, as a businessman, time is one of the capital I treasure. I use it to my advantage. However, I do not, I do not use it by rushing. Kasi pag nagkamali ako, nagsayang ako ng oras. Okay? Tapon yung oras na yun. I use time to my advantage by making very good decisions. So how should, how should you live your life as you delay your gratification? Let me just end with this verse. Sabi ng Matthew 6.33, So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So as you wait, ang suggestion ko, focus on doing your best today. Tomorrow will be dependent on what you do today. If you rush hoping to get to tomorrow, baka hindi ka makarating doon. So by just taking care of your today, your tomorrow will be okay. Okay? It will fall into place. Success is a natural byproduct. Let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you for just giving us the opportunity to worship. It is my hope and my desire, Lord, that everybody who's here will be able to understand your will so that they can respond to you better. It is my hope, Lord, that you give all of us the humility not to rush but to wait on you. I pray, Father, that you help all the students represented here to be able to appreciate your ways, Lord, and not follow the ways of the world. We thank you for our time of worship. We now commit to you our day. In Jesus' name we pray.